I have a new laser. This is the LaserMaster H10 by Ortur. Don't mind the wood, it's covering up the shipping label. Um, I'm really excited to try this thing out. It's 20 watts. It's gonna let me do 300 millimeters by 300 millimeters. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. Let's get it open. In the box, we just have, you know, a bunch of charts. Um, this looks like it tells you the different materials it'll do and the performance it'll do on them and all kinds of stuff for different softwares. That's pretty handy. So get rid of this stuff. And there she is. So effectively she's already assembled. It looks like I have to attach the laser and the feet and that's about it. Um, it does come with glasses and it comes with the air assist pump. I guess I'll have to attach that. I assume that it just sits on the table. Um, I'll look at the instructions and find out, but I am super excited to get this thing going. Um, I'm not gonna do the first couple of burns with it on camera. I uh, wanna figure it out and stuff before I, I go showing it off. Once I figure it out, I will come back and we'll show you some stuff I've made and we'll show it in action. So I made a slight mistake here. I forgot to plug the air assist in for these two. So that's why they look that way. And then you can see once the air assist is on. So I could have claimed that as a uh, as something I did intentionally, but that's a happy accident, as Bob Ross would like to say. Um, yeah, so this is just a little puzzle. I've done this with another laser I have at a much smaller scale, and I kind of wondered what it would be at larger because I have kind of large hands, big thumbs, and it was hard to put the little one together. So this is um, 12 by 12, and I just shrunk it down a little to fit in. And yeah, there's that puzzle. So we can take a look at that. All right. So this was a very infuriating puzzle when it was the smaller version. I'm hoping it's much easier to do now. <laughs> because it was a pain in the butt when I did it last time. I did go ahead and handwrite the numbers on here. The file that I bought for this on Etsy actually burns the numbers in, but I didn't want that. Oh, I thought I didn't want it. And then I was like, well, let's make this easy for demonstration purposes. My wife and I want to make a bunch of these for the nieces and nephews and give them to them for Christmas without the instructions. And I will use a harder wood. Um, this is three mil. I might use a five mil. And then I have some harder woods instead of this bass wood. So they survive contact with the enemy. Oop. That one's going to be tricky. There we go. See, they were just falling out, so I taped them on here. Okay. So we start with one. One goes in the center. Two is going in the center on top, right? I think, yes. And then three is the center from the side. So I may have grabbed the wrong wood thickness template here. This feels awfully loose. Now four is gonna come up here. And this is where it starts getting weird and you wish you had more hands. Well, cons aren't it. Um, what did I say? Four goes here, make sure I got it the right way. Okay, there we go. Where is number five? If 
5 is going to come from this side and it's going to be the top there we go with number 5 and number 6 is going to go on the bottom of course number 6 goes on the bottom number 7 goes on the end with the notch up here's where it gets tricky oh gosh darn it so we lost number four so four goes back here right okay four goes like Oh, uh, did I mention I hate this puzzle? Okay, four goes like that. Right? I don't know. I hate this thing. In, in the past 30 seconds that I hate this thing. Ugh. Let's undo it all. Move this tape so I can see what I'm doing. So we take one and one is the center. We take two and it goes down like this. Number three is going in like this. Number four comes up from here. Come on. Number five is coming in from here. Oh, get in there. Okay. There we go again, losing four. So number six and then number seven. All right, now we're cooking with fire. Number eight. Oh, come on. And number nine. Nine just goes straight down. There we go. Come on, you got it. Get in there. There we go. Pick it up. Voila. And there's the little puzzle. Isn't that cool? I think it's cool. So I like this because I did some acrylic with it, right? 
my previous laser. It does acrylic okay, but not very well. This, on my first try, um, I cut out a heart. And it did get a little smudged because I went ahead and peeled the stuff off and set it on the honeycomb that I bought. And yeah. So I did the next one with the protective coating still on and it peeled off just fine. Only thing that's on here now is my fingerprints. Very nice, clean cut. And then it can also engrave, which I thought was really cool. It's got a texture to it. Uh, it's hard to see on camera. Let me see if I can... But there's some depth there. I don't know how well the... Oh, yeah, you can see a little right there. See, there's actual depth where it's removed from the material. And for my first try, just to grab a random image off of Google just to test it out. Worked great. Um, I imagine if you used a better image and tweak the settings a little. But these are just the settings that came in the booklet. And, yeah, I was quite pleased with that. Nice, smooth cut. So, yeah, it'll cut that. Um, later, I'm going to try cutting some red and green acrylic to see if it does as well. The red might have issues. I'm not sure. And then for wood, I wanted to make some living hinges. Don't mind this. I started the living hinges much bigger, but it was going to take like two hours. So I scaled them down a little, and then it, this whole thing ended up taking 20 minutes instead of like two hours. But I, I did notice that I did the settings for three millimeter and I accidentally grabbed a uh, five millimeter. So they didn't quite go through on the back all the way, but that's my fault. So pop these out of here real quick. So I don't think these living hinges are gonna work very well since they didn't get cut through. All oh, that one does. So yeah, you know, I just made a nice little living hinge. That cracking is just where it didn't get through in the back. Again, that was entirely my fault. I grabbed the wrong, from the wrong pile of wood. I had been using three millimeter and I grabbed a sheet of five, but really satisfying on those living hinges. This one broke on me on smaller versions. Yeah, see, that's just not a good living hinge, but you can see it, it cut really nicely. And... Wow, that was potent. And then this one also broke on me in practice on a smaller one. Again, it's not through all the way, so it's not gonna be the greatest. But what happens is these just kind of pop out. Yeah, I'll see. But this one worked previously on my 100 millimeter laser. Really nice living hinge. You could use that for like a handbag or a book or, or whatever. Pretty cool. I really like this laser. Again, it's the Laser Master H10 by Ortor. There's a link in the description. Full disclosure, it is an affiliate link. They have an affiliate program, so I signed up. So I can get... Um, you know, affiliate commission. Now, one thing I didn't show when I was actually using the laser is they offer these feet. They're just, you know, little razor feet, riser feet. You just attach them right on to the existing feet. They screw in and then you can raise it up so you can fit bigger stuff underneath. Now, one, one complaint I did have with the unit, and we'll just use this as the illustrative aid. So, the way the screws work for these, I just don't like. You take the regular foot, which looks just like this. Okay, so the regular foot doesn't have this on it. This is just a hole here. And when you insert that here, you're bringing the screw in from this side and you fish the screw up in there. The front two and back two are the same um, thread. They're, uh, I think the front two are two millimeters longer, two millimeters longer. And the front two use torque while the rear two used uh, Phillips. I may have that reversed, but one of them uses torque, one of them uses Phillips. It comes with a little Allen key that barely fits in. Pretty sure the Allen key is on the front. The problem I had with, you can't see what you're doing. You can't feel the screw. I cross-threaded this one. So these three are secure and I cross-threaded that because this is just like aluminum. And it's just, you know, threaded in there. So when I was putting it in there and blindly trying to do it, cross-threaded. Um, I do kind of have the screw in there. And eventually I'm just going to have to epoxy it on. But that's something to, to be aware of. Um, be very careful when you're putting those screws in. It's screws in general. You should always rotate the opposite direction to get it to seat and then spin it. It's easier to do with your hands when you can see it. I couldn't see it there and I just got kind of in a hurry. But yeah, other than that, that has been my only complaint with the Ortur Laser Master H10 so far. 
and I'm, I'm quite happy. Like, look at that. I can't wait to do more stuff on the black acrylic. That just looks so cool. Anyway, thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you in the next video.